All right, good day, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another special live streaming on Facebook podcasting session for Live the Fuel. Uh, I got a special, very special guest returning to the show. Uh, this gentleman, for the regular listeners, aired back on ooh, May 2018, episode 176. We were talking about the documentary Chicago, the movie, and then uh, announcing Fat, a documentary. So without further ado, I can jump right in. The movie director himself from Fat, a documentary, Peter Pardini. Welcome to the show, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Dude, welcome back. Uh, I had to literally look up it up on my website. I'm like, how long has it been since you've been on? So that was, yeah, you had a solo episode back in May. So Isn't that crazy? What were you doing you in May? Movies out. I'm trying to think about that. What were we doing in the month of May? We were just really hardcore kicking in the social media stuff for the crowdfunding. Yeah, I think we had just started the campaign. Um, Cause I know that before we did the podcast, you and I were talking about how we could uh, strengthen just the page and, and uh, get more people to donate. And it worked. <laughs> so, I'd say so. We definitely broke the, what was the original goal? 125? 150 maybe. Yeah. Um, but we ended up even after, because Indiegogo allows you to go into something called in demand so that if you're, uh, you know, if you want to continue to raise funds after you achieve your goal, I think we had 230 or something almost. It's crazy. It is crazy. It I mean, we, we blew it out of the park. And if I'm not looking directly at you, it's because I'm literally sharing our feed. Because that's sharing is caring people. Anybody watching this on Facebook who loves Fat a Documentary, loves Peter Pardini, loves Vinnie Tortorich, loves Serena Scott Thomas, or just loves healthy fats in general, please share this feed because I'm doing it right now. So, boom, sharing it over to our new Fat a Documentary Facebook page, which, Ooh. by the way, we, we, um, we crushed past 1,000 likes yesterday morning, and I just turned that on on Tuesday. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm blown away by... I don't know what the adjective is or the descriptor, but the, just the rabid nature of, of, of these, I, I don't even want to call them fans. It's people care about this topic. And if you really just boil it down, it makes complete sense because it affects everybody. It's something that every single person has to do every day of their life. And uh, I think people in general are just not the fans and not the followers, but just people in general are waking up to, Hey, this, this does matter what I'm putting into my body. And I mean, just seeing it move up the charts on iTunes right now, it's kind of, I don't want to say shocking, but it's, it's well, awesome. well, you know, what? it's funny. You bring that up. Why don't we go ahead and bring up some shocking statistics? Uh, hold on a second. Let's pop in and do some screen sharing. So people know that we are not kidding. Uh, and obviously ladies and gentlemen, this show is now available. Uh, sorry, not to show this movie. Uh, is now available to buy and or rent on multiple platforms. You can get it on iTunes, which we're going to talk about here in a second. You can get it on Vimeo. You can purchase the physical DVDs or uh, Blu-rays, which I don't even have a player, but I own them off of Amazon. <laughs> and because uh, I'm all digital nowadays, you can, you can stream it on Amazon Prime Video, uh, which I've now done at one of my uh, movie parties because I literally own this on every platform out there. Uh, I think I need... I don't know if I have to own an Xbox, but you can get it on Xbox. I don't even know how you do that. Do you, do you know what, what you would buy to play it on an Xbox? Uh, I think it has to be on Xbox, and it's also on all uh, yeah, it's Facebook, Microsoft cable, cable networks too. Yeah, Google Play. Okay, so that was my question for today's podcast. I saw a list of all that stuff from from uh, shout out to Gravitas Ventures. Uh, yeah. They've got a whole lot of like cable networks already listed so that means they're live now right i mean i looked last night i kind of had fun looking around to see where it was but um i have time warner here or okay. whatever it's called now but i went and just searched fat and it came right up well, that's awesome then because i don't have cable <laughs> so <laughs> you don't have I, any <laughs> i have to depend You're on stuff like this guy yeah, I am straight up digital and uh not bad for a 40 something so i'm 41 but anyway so right here here we go we're screen sharing iTunes people, we entered the new and noteworthy category after what, 48 hours? It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's right there on the front page. Yeah. And then you scroll down a little bit. This just started happening today. We're now listed under top rentals because, yes, you can rent this, not just buy it. Uh, so you, a right. fat documentary is available for rental. Um, I don't even have the page up right now, but the 
we're, we're ranked as of this morning, number 10 across all top movies. And all movies, period. Yeah. All movies. Like I, I told my client that today and she's like, that's a thing you can do that. And I said, well, we just figured that out. Uh, <laughs> uh, here we go. I posted this to the fat documentary page uh, this morning. And actually one of our fans of Vinny Tortorich, uh, founder and, and co-creator of this movie, uh, one of his fans uh, tagged us in this. So right there, boom, number 10, that moved up. We were in number 11 last night. We were in 14th position yesterday morning. And then the day before that, we were already in what, 22nd? Yeah, I mean, if we can be, if we can get ahead of Captain Marvel, which is right ahead of us right now, I think that we're going to move. Yeah, how crazy would that be? Even for, oh, I guess it looks, well, this morning it was... Captain Marvel dropped down below uh, whatever that is, Ugly Dolls. <laughs> yeah, see, so, those, those, those movies keep moving. I've been watching the past couple of days. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that uh, children's movies would be popular on iTunes because of parents just finding yeah. something and putting it on. But if we can move above Captain Marvel, I think that'll really uh, be a click-worthy thing for just the random viewer to be like, what's this documentary beating a Marvel movie? I think that's going to be huge. That would be sick. Um, I think what's going to help us do that from just my current studies, because let's be real, I'm a marketing guy, but I told you guys from the beginning, like guys, like a lot of this is trial, error, experimentation, and consistency, consistency, consistency. And yeah. I think one of the biggest things that's really helping us is not just Vinny's loyal fans from obviously Fitness Confidential, his podcast, and, and your fans, because we're going, to take, we're going to talk about a few other movies you've helped influence, uh, but I think it's the reviews. We have been getting nonstop new five-star reviews rolling in like crazy. Last time I checked, we were over over 300 or approaching 300. Do you yeah, know? they're all they're pretty much all but three are five star, and I think one was four star and one was two star. So oh, I didn't even see you already three. had me. Yeah. There you go. Here's one iTunes. There's the great Dr. Drew. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. He is in this movie. But right there, we're already at 335 reviews. Yeah, and if you click on that ratings and reviews there to the right of the poster, um, it shows the breakdown. So yeah, so there was a four, a three, and a, and a one star. But I don't think the one star person left a review. So uh, yeah, you can't I mean, see what the gripe is, but... See, if you're going to leave a star review, like write something. That's something write else. Something I, really I can't mean. Mean. Write something really mean. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to read it. <laughs> yeah, like, like back it up a little bit. I, I mean, and, and people like you who have busted their butts in literally less than a year. People watching this, less than a year, Peter, you, Vinny, and everybody, the team created a movie. It's it's um, <laughs> it's actually to toot our own horns a little further. We had it finished in December, and it just took seven months for it to come out. <laughs> so okay, it so, took so about half a year. What was the total time lapse then? What 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 you estimate it was months wise? Uh, well, it, it we just came up on the one year anniversary of starting filming. Okay, but actual physical labor, including see, editing, thirty first correction, December tenth. Okay. So and whatever we started that, in spring, August, September, October, November. So about four and a half months of actual movie making. Yeah. That's from, crazy. From shooting to finished color correction. Yeah. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, before that was the hustle phase. That was us, just like we're seeing now, these people, like not just fans, but I think just new fans, stepping up and saying, dude, I want to jump on this Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign uh, fun wagon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and just, uh, we, we were blown away back then. We were, I mean, I'm, I remember Vinny saying, like, he was excited just to just go past 100,000. And yeah, we thought we would do well, but we didn't, we, we were kind of hoping, yeah. you know, I mean, it wasn't a, oh yeah, this will happen, you know? Yeah. We and it just it added so much valid validity to the effort too. Yep. Absolutely. And just seeing people's, most of people's reviews are, A, they say, oh, this movie's great, but then they talk about just, and this is the, really the hidden factor is that it means something to them on a deep personal level um and you're just seeing how many people's lives have been changed either by the diet or by Vinny. i mean it's mostly people who were following Vinny before and miraculously i mean i put that in quotes miraculously lost weight by doing something that was the opposite of what 
I mean, I still talk to people who say to me, that doesn't make sense. That's the opposite of what I've always been told. And if more people can kind of break out of that mindset of, I've been told saturated fat's bad, I've been told cholesterol's bad, and not realizing that there's a whole other list of things that go along with it that make those things bad. Um, I'm not saying this very well, but what I'm, what I'm trying to say I'm is you. <laughs> more people can break out of that mindset of one thing is causing my bad health rather than, you know, when you're burning fat and you're fat adapted, the fat is actually good for you and, and gives you your fuel. Well, we can um, pause on that, right? Yeah. You, you have your own experience with this, right? By the uh, way, you're looking, you're looking trim, brother, getting ready for that wedding. Congrats. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, I've, I've lost weight and gained weight my whole life. And looking back on it, I probably lost weight every time by cutting carbs without really knowing, um, I don't want to say the science of it, but just not really knowing that what it was doing versus the doctor just saying cut bread. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Cut bread, cut salt. And now I'm finding it's really just cut bread and sugar, carbs and sugar, and you're going to be fine. I mean, the salt, I have tons of salt with my food and I've continuously lost weight for two years and in the last two months, two and a half months, I've lost another 25 pounds. Wow. By, congrats, man. Thank you. By literally all I did was cut out heavy cream and I wasn't even having that much a day. It's kind of crazy because. Yeah. Vinny and I were talking about that. He was saying yeah. how some people react differently with the dairy stuff. And it just so happened that your next threshold happened to be saying, you know what, let's just try removing this. That's right, people. Sometimes you just have to try something. It was immediate, too. You know, and boom, you kicked right into gear, like another 10 pounds in no time. Immediate. Well, it's been now in, in two and a half months, 25 pounds, which is, and it's still going down every, every, every other day. I'm, you know, tracking it because I haven't had sugar. I've had zero sugar in probably two and a half, three months. So Solid. it'll be interesting because I'm having a cheat night on Sunday. We're going to go to our favorite Mexican restaurant to celebrate all of our different projects that we're working on. Can and, I give uh, you a warning? Uh, I, I'm going probably for the reason you're going to warn. Uh, the headache? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, well, we're having our rehearsal dinner for our wedding at this okay. place. Okay. And so what I'm doing is I want to go and see what happens to my body if I have what I usually have. And, uh, and then adjust accordingly so that the day of my wedding, I'm not sick. I mean, it's funny because I I'm as clean as you. I mean, I just got done trying, trying. I didn't finish it. I just yeah. tried my first ultra race two weekends ago. And I did everything fat adapted. And uh, unfortunately, due to the god-awful heat that kicked in two weekends ago, we had, I was trying to do my first 101-mile mountain biking race, mountain biking, uh, in 95-degree heat with humidity of over 70% with a real feel of 105 Fahrenheit. Um, <laughs> needless to say, it, it got a little rough. Um, <laughs> and I made it to mile 66.66. It was, it was the most I've done on a mountain bike. So I take the win on that. And it, was just, it got to the point where there was racers dropping left and right. It was heat exhaustion. Um, but you can't get energy from fat. You have to have curves, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah, but I, I don't know. Somehow I made it over 60 fat. miles on vials of olive oil from Villa Capelli mixed with uh, 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 salt from real salt in Utah, and then uh, enjoying some fat bombs from companies like Pill E Pilly Nuts and uh, and Fat as Far Fuel, the fat bomb company. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's an it's an ad it's an adaption. It makes yeah. total sense to me. It's you need to go through a change in your body. You can't just do it for a week or two weeks. You have to go through about a month at least for your body to switch over to doing what you want it to do. Um, I have people, I go to Starbucks every day near my house and it's all been pretty much the same baristas for, you know, the year and a half, two years I've lived here. And uh, they notice and they kind of ask, well, how are you, you, you've lost a lot of weight. What are you doing? And I say, well, I do kind of the ketogenic thing. And it's like 95% of the response is, oh, I tried that for like four days and yeah. I just couldn't do it. And so, yeah, because your body was just starting to get into the withdrawal phase. You hadn't even broken through the mental barriers yet. And I don't want to argue. I don't want to get into a thing because we're at the checkout at Starbucks. But and we talk more and more. And I, it's, you know, they say, wow, you're getting this heavy cream. That's just not making you gain weight. And it's like, no, it's the opposite because I'm only having fat. And therefore, my body's only burning fat. And I'm losing weight like crazy. And I'm 
my energy levels are consistent all day long. Yep. I wake up tired sometimes, but I'm that level of tire all day long. And, and you're not doing that stuff. Well, you shouldn't be doing like heavy whipping cream lattes all day long. No, it's like once in the morning and then you got that nice fat energy burn all morning. I do. I also, if I'm not in the mood for the heavy, I do a breve latte, which is a half and half. It still has yeah. a richer fat content. Yeah. I don't do any of that now. I just, I go to Starbucks still and I get a nitro cold brew. And there you go. It has nothing in it. And I, at this point, everyone talks about intermittent fasting, but I am just doing that by default. I, I don't really work out that much, so I don't need that much energy. And I'll just, it'll be six or seven o'clock at night before I eat for the first time. Oh. And, uh, but I eat a lot. I mean, I, last night I had a pound and a half of beef and five eggs. Oh, I've got, I've, I just picked up, <laughs> I just got back before this show. I just picked up four more dozen of eggs because that's how I roll at a, at a clip. And, yeah. uh, and I picked up, I normally I have a grass, I have, I have, I have a, I buy in on a grass fed cow now every year and I get a quarter. So I'm one of these rare people who has the room for a freezer, yeah. uh, but I don't feel like, I didn't feel like defrosting it. So I was in a hurry and there were some really nice grass fed filet mignon. So I picked up a couple packs. My wife just left to go with some of her girlfriends to go do a team triathlon. So I got the night alone with our, with our pup, Calvin, the coon hound. So I'm going to, I'm going to grill, grill him, him and I some nice, uh, some nice steak. Um, it's yeah it's good, it's good. But, 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 have, but peter i mean i don't know man her lifestyle sounds so restrictive uh, <laughs> i gotta eat filet mignon and eggs i mean and bacon you I know, know i <laughs> exactly the someone at last night asked me they said uh does it taste good <laughs> eggs and bacon and, and are you kidding me and fish and <laughs> And berries, if you want them. I mean, I'm doing, technically now, I'm doing more of a revised for the wedding because I'm going to go back to eating avocado and olive oil and all that stuff after. But the carnivore thing's working for me right now. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm having literally just meat, eggs, coffee, butter, and... Uh, Doesn't it simplify your shopping, shopping trip? trip? It's cheaper. No. It's cheaper. Everyone says, well, you're buying ribeye almost every day. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not. That's $13 a day versus, I mean, that's for a person. What is that times seven? It's like 80 something dollars a week. Yeah. It's so much cheaper than what I was doing before. I mean, one, one trip to a restaurant was 80 something dollars for two of us. And hold on, I got to do this because you've already yeah. been talking about some of the transformation. Ladies and gentlemen, you can follow Peter Pardini on Instagram at his name, Peter Pardini. And you can see that he's not lying. Here is November 2017, a very, very tall basketball player, I'm mm -hmm. guessing. Yes. <laughs> I don't know him that well. But dude, I, I mean, what, that, I don't even know. How, how heavy were you there? Uh, I was, let's see. That's 87 weeks ago. So uh, That was November of, of 17. 17. So I was probably like 230. Yeah. And, and, how, and how tall are you? I'm 89 right now. I'm 5'11". Yeah. There you go. So I'm 6'4", and where are you at right now? I am 5'11 and 189. Okay, so I, I range between 190, 195. So strong work, dude. Five strong five work. Five inches taller, that makes sense. Well, I'm I'm, I, hold on, to be fair, I just got I done just, doing a, yeah. trying a 100-mile race. That's not even fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. I don't work out at all, and I can only imagine if I add it, go down for a second, go down to the picture of me in the, uh, keep going, right here on the bottom left to the, of me in the, at Dodger Stadium. That, oh, yeah. one, that was from 2013 when I was 170. And if you look at me there, I do not look. No, you look way way. healthier right now. I know. I look, I, I, I always envied that picture when I look back at it, but I look gaunt there. You look a little emaciated. Yeah. And uh, I'm only 15 pounds away from that, maybe 17 pounds. Yeah. I can guarantee you by the time I get to there, it's going to be, I'm going to look a lot healthier than that. I mean, to be fair, it's a, there's a flash going off on me, but. Yeah. But what were you doing back then too, to get there or, to, or, you know, that, that's well, the other thing. Were you doing healthy things to get to that point? I had just met Katie like a few months before and yeah. I was probably around that time I was using a lot of those like TV dinners, to be honest, thinking, yeah, I was doing weight watchers, excess sodium. Yeah. yeah, I was doing I was doing Weight Watchers, and so I was getting you know thirty seven points a day or whatever it was, and so I would just 
trying to save money because I was just a, a working guy then. I didn't have, I wasn't making movies as much as I, I was. That actually is from the beginning of the Chicago shoot. I saw that tag in there, yeah. Yeah, it's the, from the beginning of shooting the documentary. But um, since you're saying that, I'm going to do some more screen sharing. I'm, I'm just going to keep you keep going. I'm just going to share a little so here. I have a regular nine to five job then, and I was saving money more than I am now, and or not saving, but just watching my spending more. And so I would get, I was basically single, and I would just get those TV dinners, thinking, well, there's 12 points in each of these, so I just have three a day, and. And uh, it's pretty amazing. And that's one of the things we talk about in the documentary is that weight loss does not always mean good health. Yes. Well said. I mean, obviously, if you have a, a disease or cancer or something and you're losing a ton of weight, that's the obvious part. But people, I think, seem to equate your weight with, with health. And I, I know that there's a lot of people who are probably have stuck at 220 their whole life since they've been adults and they're probably healthier than a lot of people who are 140, 150. Sure. And, you know, I'd like to get to 170, 175 and stay there, but I feel right now I'm much healthier than I was when I was 15 pounds lighter. So it's, uh, it's all just about how you feel. And, uh, I was always sick then too. I'd always get like colds and now you see here and here's what I was hinting at. So yeah. <clears throat> you're emaciated everything else because you weren't actually getting, nutrient density. You know, I mean, you and Vinny have talked about this a lot and a lot of people who follow Vinny Tortorich know, know this is that it's, <laughs> it's not just the calorie count, you know, it is what is in the actual food that you're consuming? Are you getting the nutrient food. density? Is it food? I wasn't eating food. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was fake food. Yeah. And, and you're not the only one. I mean, hold on. I mean, you know what? Check this out. This is why I turned on the Facebook page for Fat a Documentary because we've already got people submitting reviews and they're sharing transformation photos in their five-star reviews. Oh, that looks great. Yeah, there's, there's Robin Dobbins. So if you watch this, Robin, thank you for sharing. Check this guy out. Hold on. Uh, wow. her, her Blake. Look at this dude. Jesus, he looks like real-life Tony Stark. The bottom. Yeah, right, I know, right there in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> but look at that guy. I mean, That's incredible. And you can, you can see the smile there, but I mean, the smile is even bigger now. I mean... Look at this guy. This is crazy. You get so much confidence from doing this too. I've, I've noticed a rekindling of just, just everyday inherent confidence in myself yeah, yeah. that you don't realize is gone until you get it back. It's a weird thing. Carrie Hines, thank you for sharing. She posted that on the 31st. I love it. Oh, here we go. Aaron yeah. Easter. I oh. mean, just, yeah. And these are just, I mean, these aren't massive transformations, not all of them, right? But you could see there's a they're, change. they're big enough though, and they're massive for the people themselves. Because, like we said, if even if you only lose 20 pounds, I'm not saying she did, but I'm saying if you yeah. only lose 20 pounds and you're 180 and you go down to 160 as a guy, like that's weight, but it's also you're eating real food. And I just the biggest thing for me is I was I used to always be hungry, always, mm -hmm. and now I'm doing pretty much the opposite of what I mean until now I think there's going to be a change now with with popular opinion but it's just you don't need bread um back to the cravings thing of just oh isn't it restrictive not for me I mean I don't crave any of that stuff I, I still crave Mexican food but I think I'm more craving the cheese than the bread and well and again here's the thing and I'm sure you've listened to some of Vinny's shows too. Yeah. We, we, we both have interviewed enough. Because again, we talk about health, business, and lifestyle on this show. So we're kind of balancing it all today like we normally do. But I've, I've spoken to enough biologists and doctors where it's like, you know, you, you pull it out and then see what happens to your gut biology, right? It, yeah. you, you might not be 100% on the dairy thing. It could just be like the simplistic dairy fats. But then, for example, like cheese and butter is not processed the same as other milk products are. You might be able to add cheese and butter back in and boom, you're fine. I'm going to do all that once I, because it never makes me sick. But once I get down to where I want and I look, look the way I want to look, yeah. I'm going to add all that stuff back in. Yeah, and, and, but I'd take your time with it because that's yeah. you want to pay attention. That's, see, here's the biggest thing I love about this. What you and I are talking about right now, what this movie talks about is when you clean your lifestyle up, whether, you know, obviously this movie heavily impacts nutrition, the knowledge, the history. But it's like, guys, like your body starts talking to you again. You've hinted yeah. multiple times in the show. Like exactly. you actually, you know, if you're up, up, your stomach's upset or you get headaches, it's like, yeah, your body's getting healthy. 
It's I went to a restaurant last week and I had, um, I just got a, a bacon cheeseburger with no bun and that's all I ate. And go. there was 100% that was fake cheese because when I ate it, I'm not kidding, five minutes later, I, I felt it. And it was only a couple hours. I'm not like being a drama queen, but a couple hours later it was fine. But I was, you can taste now, your body knows when it's eating something that is not real. It, it just does. It's like, it's, you know what I like to compare it to actually, because I was watching fat the other night when it came out, I, I rented it and I, or I didn't rent it. I watched it from my Apple TV. I was like, this really, this message really pertains to almost everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're in this whole AI debate right now about whether we should have artificial intelligence or whether we should have, you know, whatever. But the big thing is CG where you watch a movie and if they have the more realistic the human face gets in CGI, the more we can tell it's fake. It's what I heard someone hypothesize because it's almost so good that human beings, and we've been around for however many millions of years, however long we've been around, we can look at a face and we are programmed even before CGI to know if it's fake. And I think it goes the same thing for food. Our body is trying to tell us, our brain is trying to tell us all the time what around us is real and what is fake. And I think we're just not, there's a lot of, of, of reasons that, you know, artificial food can help people around the world, especially those who are starving because it's cheaper. Sure. And it's, a way to, it's a way to at least bridge the gap between getting them real food. But I just feel like there's a big awakening now with, knowing i mean most people agree that sugar is bad now everyone knows that but the big one is getting people to know that there's no difference between whole grain and white bread it's it's all doing the same thing it might have a little bit less carbs in it but it's still doing the same thing and we can even tie a white potato into that the yeah. simplicity of that starch yeah and there's yeah. the whole white the potato diet thing that you want to talk about restrictive i mean there's people talking about eating potatoes all day long for however many days a week and then you can eat whatever you want the other days and you'll lose weight. And it's like, again, weight loss is not, it's not necessarily good health. I mean, I understand the concept of, I guess if you heat up a potato and then you cool it back down, it, it becomes a resistant starch, which therefore has less of a, a spike in your blood sugar. But again, it's like, I, it's, that's restrictive. Yeah, Why not yeah. just eat a steak and eggs and avocado and olive oil and, berries and green leafy vegetables and call it a day because it's it's all real food well and here's what i love you you and your your amazing crew that banged out a, a physically banged out a movie in, in months yeah. um actually learned along with this process yeah Benny's mentioned it multiple times on his podcast here it's like your cat your your crew was just like all of a sudden like what i, I didn't realize that because you guys hit on so much history that's what I love. I became a history buff in the past few years and you guys just bring up all the truth. Like there's, I couldn't believe how much data you guys dug up. <laughs> well, I mean, there it's, it's, it was interesting because you know, you I think a lot of health documentaries tend to get, um, they're not entertaining most of the time nope. and they only appeal to people who already agree with it. And they're so bogged down by the, the data and the statistics and, 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 uh, just kind of wonkiness that it doesn't really translate to anybody outside of that realm seeing it. And they forget that there's people who are outside that realm who need to be not led through it, but who've never heard this stuff before. Because when we were starting to make that movie, I had already been, you know, a year on the diet, a year and a half on the diet. And uh, I had talked to Vinny for months before that and learned a lot. and it was really interesting. One of our crew members just kind of said it out loud. And he's like, sarcastically, but he's like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be having so many of those sodas. And I just was like, yeah, maybe, but I, you know, I never try to get anybody to do anything. I mean, if they ask me how to do it, then I'll tell them. But I say, yeah, you know, it's it, a couple's okay. Or, but you know, just try cutting it down. And he's like, yeah, I have six or seven Cokes a day. Well, he's, you know, he's thin. So it's like, why would he ever stop? But when you hear, when you see doctors sitting down on this day trip that you took to San Diego to go film something and you're, you know, it's a one day movie shoot and you're moving on to the next one next week. 
but you see doctor after doctor and expert after expert saying things that make sense. It's not just like what the health where they say, this is bad and this is going to kill you. And then they don't really ever go into why they just say, don't do this because this, and then moving on. And it's like, wait, so this is just, even if it's true, it feels like propaganda. And I think ours doesn't really feel like there's any type of propaganda type thing in it. And that's really what I wanted to do as a filmmaker. I, I'm not a health guru, you know, I'm just a guy who's made movies and wanted to make something that would be the best health documentary ever made. That was my goal. Yes. So I, I hope we've done that because I just, it seems like a lot of people are really responding to it. Well, I, again, I just, I can't get over the fact that your crew because I, one thing I appreciate about it was when you guys talked about it on, on Vinny's podcast or on the Facebook lives was that, and then I think this really helps people following this or find the movie is that everybody's going through this. They're always surrounded by products and food and stuff that they didn't ask to be surrounded by all the time. Like for example, I guess in your world of movie making, what is it called when you have to have stuff there for the crew? Like there's a late crap, crap service. Oh, okay, there you go. So, and that's like a part of the contractual requirements for movie crew people, I guess, right? Yeah, and it's an unspoken rule too, even okay. if you're not in union, you just, you, you have food there for the crew because they, they can't go anywhere. They have to be setting up all day long, so. Yeah, and, and even though, you know, Vinny's Mr. No, no Sugars, No Grains, like he's not going to force that upon other people. So you guys brought in whatever is a nice general allotment of stuff. And I'm guessing there were sodas and stuff there, right? Um, I'm not so sure about that. Ooh, I think, good. I think we've, we tried to make it a little more lenient so there were cashews instead of just macadamia nuts type thing. So it's like okay. we had a wider range of, of, of nuts. But Well, that's good. I'm actually I'm even happier to hear that you guys definitely tried to provide kind of like a hint of what the healthy stuff is. I mean, everyone likes salami, cheese, pepperoni. I mean, if, unless you're vegan, we didn't have any, we didn't have any vegans on set. So, okay. I mean, we would have. You know, we would have. I, I, I mean, I, I know quite a few could living in Los Angeles. And... All of I, and it sounds like they're a different race of people, but they're just people trying to be healthy. And yeah. all the vegan people that I know aren't doing it because it's some moralistic thing for the most part. I think they're just doing it because they think it's the healthiest thing to do. But as you're saying with the crew, they were asking questions then. They were starting to look at the package and starting to, you know, say, and I don't think many of them really, you know, it's like even if we got 30% of them to change, that's a big percentage, but I think most people just go back to what they do and then they wait until there's a health problem. And that's what we're really trying to head off with movies like this is to say, you don't have to wait until it's dire straits. Do it now. Have your cheat day every once in a while. That's fine. Like no one's telling you, at least not Vinny, uh, no one's telling you that you can never eat a, you know, a burrito again or yeah, exactly. a sandwich. But the craziest part of it is that now that I've been doing it for so long, I don't even want that stuff. I don't want it. Well, admittedly, it's uh, people are like, oh, well, you, you're, I know you're Mr. No Dessert Guy. And I'm like, admittedly, I never was a big dessert guy. And it wasn't because I'm Mr. Crazy Health Nut. Now, granted, I'm a healthy, fit person and I do a lot of crazy, adrenaline and junkie sports. So I know things like Vinny knows where it's like, okay, dude, what you put in is what you get out. Yeah. So I don't want to be on the side of a mountain and be passing out from fatigue because I ate a box of donuts this morning. <laughs> I mean, you need more of that's the thing is that, it, that you learn is that with carbs and sugars, you always need more to keep fueling. But since I've been, like I said, fasting by default, just cause I'm never, never really hungry. I'm, I'm noticing it. Like my body is tightening up and it's, it's obvious. And it, before I was just losing weight, but I kind of always had that kind of amorphous look to me. Yeah. Now it's like, I'm starting to see some definition. It's, I still have about 15 to 20 pounds of fat to go, but my body has to just be burning fat all day long. That's where it's getting its energy from. It doesn't need extra fuel. And if it did, it would tell me, and then I go and eat. So, well, and, and thanks to your movie, uh, at one thing that you kind of, since you hinted at, you know, veganism and stuff like that earlier, I love the fact you guys went back 150 years, found the history of how these lifestyles were kind of founded and created. But the one beautiful piece of this film is that we you guys really did not bash any lifestyle choice we said listen we're just bringing the history up the truth so you know how it all came into fruition and then you still get to make your own decision and there's no criticism 
on vegan, vegetarian, carnivore, paleo, keto, you know, whatever. No, we only went after people who lied about data that was not accurate or yes. um, the worst the worst I think anybody could point out was the part at the towards the end of the movie where I zoom in on uh, Dean Ornish's mouth as he's just repeating the same lie he told 15 years before. Yeah. You know, because he says on the Charlie Rose show, he says, oh, don't get me wrong. I hope that this is correct. But if it, if it, if it is, I'll come out. I'll be the first to say it is. And then cut to 15 years later after a study's come out. And he's like, oh, yeah, it clogs your arteries. And then I just start zooming in on his mouth and droning it out because it's like he's just repeating the same lie over and over. He has no intention of telling the truth. Yeah. It's like so, – and I, I, I honestly – I can't – bashing vegans, then we, we bash vegans there. But that's it. And, and that's not necessarily veganism a bash. It's just that, that influencer. He's, he is yeah. mis, he's misinfluencing. Like the, yeah, he was, uh, what? he was Clinton's – I think he was Bill Clinton's uh, – diet advisor or something i had heard yeah and look at him now man clinton man is emaciated looking he's not a yeah. healthy looking guy no. uh and he's one of the world's uh, you know preferred speakers one of the top paid speakers he's not looking good on stage right now man um yeah, he's not that old what he's like 70 or no i mean you talk about a aging right so hold on back to whether you guys are bringing him up on itunes or you bring it up on amazon um again shout out to dr drew pinsky right dr drew he's in his 60s yeah that dude is buff. Uh, I this, went this on his podcast. Justice. <laughs> I went on his podcast with Vinny a couple weeks ago, and uh, he, I mean, he's had the white hair forever. Yeah, but he, uh, he looks great, and he looks thinner. I mean, minutely because he's always been thin, but he looks thinner than he did even uh, five years ago when I, I did a behind the scenes thing for Corolla for his movie and we did a fake interview with, with Drew where he was pissed off that he wasn't in the movie <laughs> and, and there, I mean, he was still buff, but he wasn't, he was getting a little bit of extra punch on him. And yeah, it's amazing what it does for even people who are in shape already. My cinematographer, John, the cinematographer I've worked with John Honore for 11, 12 years now. He, yeah. um, He's, he's, he got health conscious back in like 2011 and he's gradually kind of like I am now, he's gradually lost weight over the years and he's like 170 now, 165, probably my height. Mm -hmm. And he, um, you know, was shooting this movie and he just said, yeah, I'll try keto. He did it. And he said, I, I'm seeing my, my abs for the first time since high school. Wow. And he's already thin. So this is a guy who works out all the time, super healthy. He schedules his meals. He rarely eats, he doesn't eat anything that's not real, but all he did was just cut out the little bit of carbs he had and abs and within a month. It's crazy. Well, I, I tell people all the time, like I, I quit drinking beer and I used to live in Colorado, man. So trust me, there was breweries everywhere. Yeah. Racing yeah. mountain bikes, like at, you get done with a mountain biking race, you, you, you crack a beer. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't do that anymore. Um, and people are like, oh my God, you just keep cutting all this amazing things out of your life. And I said, I actually like being able to take my hand, run it down my, my flat you know, torso, and, and I'm not always popping abs, right? That's not a <laughs> realistic lifestyle. Even Vinny yeah. talks about that. Um, you know, if I, if I, I, go, I go to a winery with my wife and we, we drink red wine. So yeah, if I went out to Napa Valley in California for a week, I'm probably not gonna have popping abs after doing all the wine tastings. You know? <laughs> But again, it's so easy to just boom, drop right back into that state of ketosis with the way I live my life because I'm a ketogenic athlete and I'm fat adapted. So well, that's how I gained all the weight when I was editing the Chicago movie is that, you know, a few times a week I'd be so stressed out from editing it 16 hours a day because it was a lot more involved than this. And uh, I, I would have beer three, four times a week and I gained like 60 pounds in a year and a half. And Are you serious? Didn't really change much else. Wow. Didn't really change much. I gain, see people talk to me and they say, well, I, I eat carbs and I don't gain weight. And it's like, yeah, well, that's you. For me, I, I could go and I can guarantee you it's going to be water weight, but the day after my cheat, I'm going to be probably six or seven pounds heavier on the scale because of all the water that I hold on to. And okay. that's me. Some people can weigh themselves the very next day or the next few days and there's not, no change. But for whatever reason, for me, I have a really bad reaction, not in pain or not in any of that, but my body holds onto water like crazy and I'll just gain 10 pounds like it's nothing. 
Hmm. So why would I want to do that? And my, my, my big, the funniest argument against a ketogenic diet, which fine, you don't want to have it. I really, even after making this movie, I do not care what you do. I just want the information out there. So you understand where it came from. And maybe you understand that grains are called, called heart healthy because it's a study that was comparative to white flour. So of course it's going to be healthy comparatively to that. Sure. But for me, like my favorite argument against the ketogenic diet that is so ridiculous is that yes, it works, but after you stop it, you gain the weight back. Hmm. That's why you don't stop it. <laughs> yeah. Don't stop the diet and you won't gain weight back. So, well, so, since, uh, since uh, meeting influencers like, like Vinny Tortorich and then meeting yeah. guys like you working on amazing projects like this, I'll tell you all the time, like I, I took the responsibility on my own wing and yeah, maybe I'm more nutty than other people, but it's like, guys, like we all need to be responsible for our own health. And one of the best ways to do this is become better informed and acquire the knowledge and then make your own decisions. You, you don't have to let this movie make your decision for you, but if you at least pay attention, uh, soak up the knowledge and then at least question. Now, I think that's one of the biggest takeaways for me if I was reviewing the movie is that, guys, like this is a documentary film of all legitimate truth with legitimate history. We just helped compile it, put it out and actually in a very entertaining way, a very informative way. And now hopefully more people can come away from seeing this and say, wait a minute, maybe what I knew might not be right. Or maybe yeah. what I've been reading on, on, the, on the grocery store shelf is wrong. Or maybe I should be getting a second opinion from a new doctor, right? Well, and stop thinking, stop thinking that big, bigger corporations are going to do anything other than want to make money, which is what they should be doing. I mean, they're not people. Corporations are not people. They were started by people a long time ago, then they grew. And now their whole sole purpose is to make money. It doesn't matter if they have commercials on TV that show you how much they care and how much they're, they don't care. And yeah. that's fine. Stop thinking they're evil as well. They just are. The only way you're going to break out of this is by making the decision for yourself and in a way, stop letting, you know, social media and, and I, I hate saying big corporations, like I'm anti-corporation. I just stop thinking that everything is looking out for you because it's, it's only looking out for its own stability and its own survival and stop letting yourself be programmed by it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to go to Taco Bell at some point and I'm going to eat all that stuff because I, I still crave Taco Bell every once in a while. Well, that's because that's, that's how they designed it in the lab. They want you to crave it. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to eat that again. And Taco Bell's a giant corporation, but I don't have to have it all the time. And I was talking to Katie when we went into, we go to the grocery store probably once every few days because we just get fresh meat. And I said, isn't it kind of sad that I can, we can literally walk in and take a direct diagonal to the meat section and then in this huge store and we're done. Yeah. It's, we're done. Yeah. And there's this giant. But how many aisles did you skip past? How many aisles? I mean, there's in, in our Ralphs here, there's like 18, 20 aisles of just stuff that's on the no-go zone. And, and it's all manufactured. All of it. I mean, and even it's like the hardest thing. I, I love salami, but I just have tried to cut it out because it's so hard to find anything that doesn't have, I mean, everything's going to have dextrose because mm. it has to for shelf life. Yeah, preservative. But, and that's really, it's not going to do anything. But like corn syrup, corn syrup. Uh. It's like, why are, you, why are you putting this in here? Oh, oh, <laughs> can, can I lose my shit with you? Okay. Sure. Do you like pickles? Um, I don't mind them, but I don't. Yeah, okay. they're they're well, fine. Yeah. So there's some big names out there. You ever hear of a Clausen's pickle? Yeah. Okay. They they I think they're commercial. They they crack when they bite into it. Okay. So for years, I loved Clausen pickles, and I never read not the graph, ladies and gentlemen. Part of the lesson here in this movie as well is you don't le read the chart of the grams and crap on the back of the labels. Read the fine print underneath. The paragraph underneath is your real hack. For nutrition it's uh it's where they hide all the gems well anyway i just happened to months ago pick up a clausen jar and just i've never turned it over it's a pickle it's it's a cucumber just a pickle it should be pickled and vinegar and salt and, and and you know if you get the garlic one there's some garlic anyway and dill flip it over corn syrup it took 
pickle a pickle. I grew up on a farm, dude. We used to make our own pickles. You don't need corn syrup. Why the hell are you putting corn syrup in a pickle? And for me, I would pay more. Like I would pay a dollar more for salami if I if if they it was more fresh because I understand they have to do a certain type of preservative for it so that it has a shelf life, but there's no option for a more expensive one Mm -hmm. if it has to be more fresh and less quantity. And that's really, I mean, Finney talked about this, but when we went to Sedona to do the sound mix on the movie, my old stomping ground there, I love Sedona. There's, and it's like a bunch of people there who are like health nuts and it's, there is nothing. You can't find anything in that place. Like the, literally like no macadamia nuts. Um, all the salami has corn syrup and sugar in it. So I just was like, you know what? I'm going to go for these three days and I'm just going to get, when I just went back because Chicago was doing an album there and I went and I just got hard boiled eggs and I just ate those during the day. And then I went to the restaurant at the hotel and had a, a steak and that was it. Really, if you're trying to do real keto, mm-hmm. and I hate also that people think keto is a word that's made up. It's just a scientific term, a shortening of a sentence. Yeah, it's shortening of ketogenic. It's a ketogenic yeah. lifestyle. It goes back decades. Yeah, I mean, almost oh, over 100 years now, I think. Yeah. Like, if you want to learn more about it, watch the movie because you'll learn it straight from the famous film director, Jim Abrams, about his son. So Crazy. And so I just was like, you know, if I lived here, I couldn't, I couldn't do this diet. I'd have to order it online and have it delivered. It was, uh, I mean, I, that's where my base was when I took my little adventure career doing the wild and firefighting was in Arizona and yeah. we traveled all over the West and, and the stuff that they fed us at the fire camps was cliff bars. And yeah, it, it was really, if I was living the way I now back then, it wouldn't really hard because yeah. you go to the gas stations, uh, the, the supermarkets are Really, they don't have supermarkets. They have basic markets, you know, more remote regions. Sedona is a actually a tourism spot. Uh, you're better off actually driving north to Flagstaff and yeah. then finding a local butcher. And then you would have found the better meats that you're looking for. Yep. That's a yeah. little extra effort. So Yeah, and I talked to, I had dinner with this, uh, someone who works as a, like one of, an executive in Seattle for Starbucks. And I was like, dude, like you should really, if you have anybody's ear, you should really consider figuring out a way to have something like a keto box because you have all those, those oh, yeah. boxes. If you had a keto box, that thing would sell out like crazy, but it has to be real. You can't, because I can't even go there and Vinny had a rant about this, about the sous vide eggs or Corolla did. And then Vinny was like, yeah, yeah I, I used to buy them until I read the ingredients. And I was like, oh man, it's like, come on, Starbucks. It's eggs. Charge, like, again, charge more for it. People yeah. will buy it. Come on, they charge. Buy. I just spent seven dollars for or six dollars for a breve latte. I'll pay. I'll pay. I know. I know. Charge more for the box, and people will get it. But the closest have- I can get right now is they do in that cooler case. Though you can get like some type of Italian meats with uh, like a provolone cheese or something. So that's yeah. the closest you can get. Is like meat and it's cheese. It's all right. I mean, it's it's pretty good, but it's still it's pretty thin too. It's not yeah. a lot of nutrients in there, but. You know, it's Starbucks. I get it. They have heavy cream. It's fine. But I, I'm, I, do you, did you know the other hack is they actually have Kerrygold butter? Do they really? Oh, yes. I found this a yeah. year uh-huh. ago. If you get a cup, I got a cup of coffee in the winter one time and I was still experimenting with, you know, fatty coffee. And I'm like, do you guys have butter? They're like, yeah, we have these little like uh, little gold. I see, I see them pull out gold packaging, these little single serve like flat pieces of butter. I'm like, oh, is that Kerrygold? And they actually had single serve carry gold packets of butter. They have the ability to do it, but it's like, unless people start, I mean, hopefully the movie, I mean, it's, it's doing really well right now. And hopefully in a small way, even in a small way, it has some type of shift in thinking for people. Um, so isn't that the mission yeah. behind everything you've done with all this? Like this, well, yeah, this sure, is and, just, and just let, yeah, it's, it's everything's a passion project. It's like, just get it out there and, and let people decide for themselves. And if they watch the movie, I mean, I went on a friend of mine, Jimmy Pardo's podcast. He's a comedian. He's was worked to Conan for a long time. Hmm. Um, I went on his podcast and he, he's a funny guy. And he's like, I watched the movie. It's amazing. It's shocking. I'm not going to change my diet at all. And he's thin and he's a runner. And I was like, that's fine. But cool. just as long as it's like people watch it and they're aware that 
you know. Well, it, you never know. Uh, where uh, the dietary uh, guidelines came from, first of all. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Our joke of a pyramid, the the standard American diet, the sad diet, all of it. Um, yeah. But but that gentleman, the whole point of his, you're putting a a, a seed in that brain, and yeah. in a couple of years from now, something could surface, and he'll remember that film. Like, wait a minute. He brought it up to me the next time he saw me. He was at the Chicago show, and he came up to me, and he's like, "So, what do you? You look like you've lost weight since I saw you." And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "So, what are you doing?" What are you exactly eating? And I said, meat, eggs, butter, coffee, water. Yeah, but like, what do you eat? And I was like, that's, that's it. That's it. Do Meat's a pretty broad statement. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I said, yes, meat, real food. It's not, it's not, it's not witchcraft. Like, it's just real food. And the, the thing that kills me is, again, I'm not bashing on vegans because the thing that I find the most interesting about the vegan uh keto or meat eater debate is that they're so close to being the same thing if it weren't for the meat (laughs) if you just cut the meat you're basically vegan and it's all the same food and you can do a ketogenic diet and be a vegan Mm -hmm. so it's not like i'm sure most of them are are in ketosis if they're not eating very much but there's way more fake food in order to have an enjoyable vegan diet than there is. Well, then, then he always did a great job so, of that. Yeah, you know, what's the... Uh, you couldn't create... The, yeah, the vegan lifestyle was not capable of sustainability until supplementation was invented because one of the key ingredients is B12. Like That is an essential vitamin that you cannot find in that lifestyle. So yep. you have to supplement it. And shocking, I'm having no vitamin C right now on basically a carnivore diet for three months and I've had... No scurvy. No scurvy's popped up. Oh, yeah. Well, again, misinformation. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But, um, yeah, I just think, you know, when I go to the store and I see the Impossible Burger, oh. above all, uh, not judging people, above all, that means people want to eat meat. We yeah. Like, okay. Really Marketing guy talking to you right now. I'm like, yeah. that drives me nuts because I'm like, yeah. wait a minute. Every single thing, uh, you know, uh, meatless hot dogs, meatless burgers, meatless steaks. I'm like, Okay, if you're anti-meat, then find another word to use. Why are you using all the words refer to meat? <laughs> I know. And so what kills me is it's like looking on the back of the package and seeing 40 ingredients. And this isn't health. Like, do you think that's healthy? <laughs> okay, no. I will give you, I will give you, if you supplement like crazy and you, for a moral decision, do not want to eat animals, you just can't do it. If you followed a vegan diet that was all real foods with a lot of supplementation, I would say you'd probably be pretty healthy. But the truth of the matter of that is that most people aren't doing that. No. They think they're doing both animals and themselves a service by eating that way. And they're really just not. I mean, what was this? What was the thing about? How about the, uh, the, the vegan bakeries? Yeah. It's like that. So you're just sugar loading. Yeah. So, this is, we're, we're preaching to the choir here, but it's, I just wish people understood why things were the way they were. And then maybe they wouldn't think certain things like they just trust government guidelines because, oh, it was a study was done and they did this whole thing for 10 years. And it's like, yeah, that's the problem. They did it for 10 years and didn't find anything, came out with something that wasn't really true. And then someone like Dave Feldman, who's not even a scientist, he's a software engineer, <laughs> through trial and error, found out that if you had a shit ton of cholesterol, you, your cholesterol would go down. Yeah. It's like, what? But the key is no carbs with that. And it comes back to the whole thing of like people saying, well, red, red meat causes this and red meat causes that. And where, it, where, where's the substantiated proof and data? I could, see, I could see it being a problem if you're having a ton of carbs and you're smoking and you're never burning the fat that you're ingesting because you're burning carbs and sugar first, and then your body's dealing with the smoking and it's dealing with the drinking, I could see the fat being a bystander that adds on to the problem. But I just, the story in the beginning of the movie about Stephenson, the guy who basically was stranded with with Inuits and had to eat what they had, and it was just whale blubber, whale, fish, and water. And he was completely fine. And then did a year-long study 
completely just, he was already a healthy guy, no change in his health. Didn't get better, didn't get worse. It just was nothing, absolutely no change. And that's really mind blowing. That was a hundred years ago. And people, why would they know about it? Right. It's not why don't they, it's why would they? It's a hundred years ago and no one talks about it. And people still say there hasn't been a long-term study on, you know, eating meat and water and just cutting your carbs. And it's like, yes, there has a hundred years ago. There was, and it was, he didn't leave the hospital for very much. So crazy. It's mind blowing. And that's why I couldn't wait to get you, you know, in the spotlight get you out there more because Thank you. Uh, this is too. I mean, you uh, don't get me wrong, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, he's done other crazy passion projects. I mean, actually let's go through some screen sharing back up here. If you go to peterpardini.com, I mean, don't get me wrong. Obviously we love you for fat, a documentary, but dude, you won awards on creating a documentary about the, one of the most famous or the most famous band of all time. I mean, what, what is the record on that for Chicago? They are the number one American band of all time in record sales. There you go. Billboard. Yeah. So you launched that back in 2017, crushing it. Uh, your new project, by the way, is Rolling Thunder. Uh, what's up with that? Uh, we shot that a year ago and we are just searching for distribution for so it. It's just like we just did. Yeah. So obviously Gravitas yeah, picked I'm up not, fat. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to just let that one go because it's a crazy, uh, we've shot an entire feature film in one day. What? And, uh, yeah, it's a it's a mockumentary. We I didn't realize that was one day. One day. Because Serena was there. Serena was there, and it was basically set up like it was a down movie set. So we had a fake short film that that a real the, the same crew did fat. The the crew was there filming a fake short film. We got all these actors: Joe Montana, Wes Studi, Serena. Yeah. Um, who else? We got uh, Chicago was in it. And everybody went to set to make this short film, but we had the main actor in it, Jake. He um, and I basically developed just the story so that he would know everything that was going on. But he and I were pretty much the only ones that knew what was going to go, what was going to happen. So everyone's oh, nobody else had a clue you were doing this. Well, no, they knew we were making a mockumentary, but they knew to stay in character and pretend as if they were making a bad short film. Oh, and yeah. so everybody kind of got to do what they've always wanted to do on set and yell at the director and ignore the director and, and do everything. So we shot for like eight hours and the whole movie is an hour and 25 minutes and it's done, but you know, it's, it's, it's hard selling. It's harder to sell a narrative now than it is hmm. a documentary. Well, um, I mean, admittedly back to, obviously we have to come back to fat. Uh, we're already getting our dreams blown out of the water. I mean, you didn't realize this was going to crush it. So I, mean, I thought it would do well, but not, not top 10 of all time on iTunes in terms yeah, of this top. fast in, I mean, I'm going to look right now. Three days or four days, three. Well, since Tuesday. So whenever that is, but I'm going to look at my iTunes right now to see. Technically, since we launched at midnight, that's basically we're in that fourth day realm. So we're not even a full week in. No, we're still number 10 on overall, but just to be number 10 behind, you know, Captain Marvel, Avengers, Shazam, uh, Seth Rogen movie, huge budget movies. They're all huge budget movies. And ours is the one that, you know, there were some really big believers in it, but it was, it seems like, I don't know, man. It's uh, to be up against those people. I mean, look, it's uh, Avengers, Longshot, Pokemon, Shazam, Escape Room. Yeah, the uh, fact that we got into new and noteworthy so quick alongside of the Avengers compilation. I mean, like, yeah, uh, Hell, the Reboy of Hell, Hellboy. I mean, no outside influence. I mean, we, we, this is completely crowdfunded. And uh, at no point, I mean, and I've been lucky to have this with both this and the Chicago one, but at no point did anybody who gave us money step in and say, you you have to do this. And if they would have, we would have just said, sorry, it's, that's not the deal. We we're making our movie and we're going to just basically put what we know to be the truth in there. Um, based on, I mean, one of the biggest things for the movie was when we got a New York times subscription and you could just keyword type in Stephenson and then narrow your search range for when you know the Stephenson study was, 
And then there's all the old New York Times articles from 100 years ago right there that verify exactly what you said. And, you know, it's crazy. Like, that's how we got all of those news articles you guys see in the movie yeah. are from the New York Times because I figured if you're going to go over time, pick one news source, pick one place that has everything. And then, so that way it's always the same viewpoint on it. It's not a differing, you know, you're not picking and choosing where your information's coming from. And, you know, New York Times has been around for a, a long time. And back then, I mean, news was news. It was just literally Bill Hummer Stephenson age was at the Bellevue hospital and he did this. And this doctor said that, and it's, there's no opinion like now, or it's just all opinion and we don't know what is true or not. But back then it was literally just the facts. And so it was such a great tool to be able to search up Eisenhower's heart attack, go to that date. And there it is. Eisenhower's heart attack. The whole world's terrified. Everything's substantiated. And it's really kind of cool to see the march of time when it comes to just someone had a crazy idea about not eating anything with a face. And I just think it's, it's just proof of your hard work. And again, I, I know we already said this earlier. I, just, I love sharing this one because I, I've been geeking out about documentaries for a while. And again, like number one in documentaries, like ahead of Apollo 11, for God's sakes. I mean, awesome. Free Solo. I don't know if you watched this. This crazy great documentary about the, the free climber. Awesome. I, yeah, I, I've watched half of these documentaries and you're just outranking everybody, right? Number one position. Go back to uh, go back to the main page and then go to the right side and click on top all time movies right below that. Oh, the all time. Now go to documentary. Right there. Yeah. That. Number all eight, time. number ten. And That's crazy for all time bestsellers. Yeah. yeah. In three days, I mean, and those are I mean, yeah, I'm we're right behind Food Inc. I mean, mm -hmm. wow. And Food Inc. had a much uh, a much a uh, like a uh, more like they do more of uh, the distributor does more of like the narrative stuff yeah. and uh, Magnolia pictures. And so they, and that was what, 10 years ago or something. I remember in Chipotle, it wasn't Chipotle in trouble because of food ink or something. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember that actually. <laughs> and it's like, really, we're going to, I mean, anybody now, there's no excuse after watching this movie and then to see any fast food chain and to think that they should have healthy food. Even after I said, oh, Starbucks should have it. It's still Starbucks. It's, it's not, still considered fast food. They're not, there to be a health, they're, not, they're not supposed to be a health store. No, it's okay. Yeah. Their whole business model is based on convenience. Yeah. I mean, I, I loved uh, Super Size Me, but my biggest gripe with it is it's like, well, yeah, eating at McDonald's for 30 days straight is not good. Yeah. It's like, your, what's your hypothesis? It's that eating fast food for 30 days is bad for you. Of course it is. So, um. Well, and again, the the other unsold piece that I have to tie it back to because we we did such a great job as a team on this is that this is a crowd funded film, people. Like, yeah. this came from the people by the people. The people from spoke nothing. from nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like Vinny had an idea. You you meet him at the Adam Carolla Studio or whatever because you guys crossed each other's paths between yeah. podcasts because you were there for the Chicago, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, oh, maybe we should follow up. <laughs> And then it's like, oh, maybe we should try the crowdfunding. He calls me up. He's like, what do you think? I'm like, yeah, we could, we could do some stuff. I was like, I think, I think you can do it. And, you know, I sent him some research on that. And then, and then it's like, fast forward. Uh, <laughs> it's weird because within two, within two months of going on his show, let me see, it was beginning of March, April, May, June. Three months later, we had funded it. <laughs> I met him. I mean, officially met him. I met him on Corolla, but. Officially meeting him was the very beginning of March of 2018. And by the beginning of June 2018, we had the entire movie funded. Well, and I will say this to shout out to Vinny Tortorich because that's a testament to the way he's wired. He's done that with his other businesses and companies as well. It's like he sets a goal. He's like, I got to figure this out and I got to go do it. And it's the common, it's, it's the same thing with Chicago too, where it's the common. I mean, I know it's it's hard to understand that Chicago would be underrated and underappreciated, but everyone doubts those two. Vinny, everyone doubts yeah. Chicago. Oh, Chicago, they're still going. Yeah, they are. Oh, it's Vinny. a generational shift. That's why I think you know Vinny, they just. Who's this Vinny Tortorich? Well, he only was responsible for raising a quarter of a million dollars, and we're now number one on iTunes and in in less than five days. 
<laughs> yeah, so he's nobody though. So yeah, what what does he know? What does yeah. he know? Like honestly, you could literally just drop the proverbial mic already. Uh, yeah. And again, iTunes is already one platform. We yeah. have, we haven't even promoted how well we're doing on everything else. But I, I mean, this is just phase one. This is well, we phase focus one. on iTunes now because getting to the top of that that chart would be unbelievable for our movie because it would just bleed over to everything because you would start having more people with the blue check mark on Twitter mm -hmm. saying like, Oh, this movie, if, if, you know, any of the top people, like I know some of the Kardashians do the keto thing and yeah. uh, what's the actress um, who is in uh, high school musical. I know that Vanessa Hutchins. I know she oh. does. So if they see it and they say, oh my God, this is what I've been telling all of you about because of iTunes, then everyone starts to go to the other places and it just gets it everywhere and we can stay at the top of the charts. I mean, there's one in the top 10 there that was uh, Searching for Sugar Man, which is one of my favorite documentaries and that was probably six, seven years ago. Oh wow, um, it's been out that long. And so it's, it's still in the top 10 all the time. Um, and it's one of my favorite documentaries ever. And I just think that if, if we can get through this first month or so and stay near the top, I think we'll stay near the top for a long time. Uh, so, I think uh, we, we've already, we've started off with a lot of momentum. A lot of fans have spoken. The reviews are still rolling in. Uh, we got influencers like uh, uh, Vinny from uh, the Jersey Shore. You know, already promoted it, you know, the Keto Guido. Uh, we just need more, more, more big fans like that stepping up. Uh, and it's, we're going to keep rolling, man. We're going to keep put, put 110% behind it. Cause that's what we do. Yeah. We're going to do it. Let's do it. Yeah. So listen, I've had a blast today. Uh, great. I got to take care of the pup. I got to grill some steaks. Cause that's, we just got done talking a whole show about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I'm hungry. Yeah, I know. Right. So, uh, obviously you've been on the show before you're the guest co-host and we haven't actually done it live before, but how would you like to sum all this up? How do you want to close out the show? You know, is there an all encompassing message you want to leave behind for the podcast yeah. world and obviously Facebook live. So if you bought this movie and watched it, thank you. And especially if you've bought it and supported the project, but if, if we can share this with as many people as possible, they're going to watch it and they're going to say, Oh my God, like one of my friends did last night. Is this true? That's what we want. We want people to watch it and say, I've never heard that before. And then they go and tell other people and then we can really make a change because in all honesty, like documentaries, that's what they're for. You, you tell a story that people haven't heard before and it leads them to either changing their lives or helping change other people's lives. So I would just say continue to share it. If you haven't watched it, even if you don't want to buy it, just rent it and watch it. And uh, that's all i got to say. Well said. I couldn't have said it any better. Well, listen, hang tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. The movie director himself, Peter Pardini. Chicago, up and coming, uh, rolling thunder. And obviously, the whole point of this show, getting in behind the scenes of FATA documentary. We are crushing it on the iTunes. We're going to keep getting the hustle out there. Thank you for making the time today, uh, coming on live and getting, getting your name out there more. People need to know uh, who Peter is, man. Because like, dude, I don't know how you figured out how to do all this. But <laughs> I, know, I know Vinny appreciates it. I know Serena appreciates it. We all appreciate it. So Thank you. Uh, thanks again for that crazy amount of creativity. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Check out Fata Documentary. Uh, go, if, you, if you're on the Facebook watching right now, go to the Fata Documentary page. We have everything linked there. Again, it's iTunes, Vimeo, Amazon. All, all the key, all the, some of the big cable networks now have it per Peter. So uh, again, thanks for tuning in to the Fuel Show. We're here to fuel your health, business, lifestyle. Peter Pardini, check him out at peterpardini.com. Follow him on Instagram. He's got the Facebook uh, page up as well. We'll have this all linked in the show notes like we always do on livethefuel.com. And uh, again, thanks for tuning in. And remember, you too can live the fuel. We'll talk to you guys again soon.